We were just coming out as closeted WWF fans uh, before the camera turned on, but that's okay for us. You know what? And sometimes it's uh, it's embarrassing to admit it, but now I'm just confident in you know what that that was the type of TV I loved, and you know what? It's kind of still my guilty pleasure: WWE and The Bachelor. This is why we're best friends, because Brett's been on my Bachelor podcast before, War of the Roses. Now, what did you think yeah. of Hannah and the finale? Uh, the, the finale was disastrous. It was, it was the worst, best TV I think I've ever watched. And it was this season that I said, look, I'm not going to watch the season. I'm just, I'm just, I'm over it. I'm taking a break. And of course, you get drawn right back in. So I watched uh, the tell-all after the final rose. Like this was, when Chris Harrison said this is the most dramatic rose ceremony ever, <laughs> it wasn't dramatic. This was the worst. It was the worst. Can we agree that we don't like Jed and Tyler is now too good for Hannah? Uh, you know what? Everybody deserves a second chance. So I won't say that Tyler's too good for Hannah. I just think it was the way that the show was. And I, I don't know what it's like to be in her shoes, but we can agree that, uh, yeah, Jed, like, ugh, that's just tough. You can't, you can't go back from that. I wouldn't want to be somebody's second choice, but also as a musician, how did you feel about the songwriter's like musical proposal? I don't know. And the thing about it is that be, he knows and we know it's on national TV, so there's always an ulterior motive. Had someone done that, someone in music privately, then it becomes a story later, that's the way to go because that's just a moment between her and me. That's the way that it should have been as opposed to, I know we're going to have 7 million people watching. I know that Instagram's going to have 12 million people and I know this, this, this. So that's a total of 20 million people, blah, 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 blah. When it's all said, none of impressions. I'm going to do this proposal. It's the wrong reasons. That's my opinion. Did you ever have a moment like that dating married with Cecilia where you just, it was like just you and her and you were like, I got this special song. You brought out a guitar. It was. It was uh, the song called 321. 321 was our song. That's it. I had it for a year. It was just hers and my song, period. That's it. I ended up playing it at our, our little house in Shore Park before we moved to uh, Nashville. And I ended up playing that song literally just kind of around uh, the, the living room when my manager was there. And he said, what is this song? And I said, it, I don't know, it's just our song. Yeah, yeah. You know, so whatever. I was like, no, no, no. What is this song? And I said, nothing. Don't worry about it. It's just, it's just our song or whatever. And he... And I, I think I made him promise that he wasn't going to tell anybody about it because I didn't want it to be commercialized. But he told the president of our record label. And then he sent them a demo that I'd recorded. And then they're like, this needs to go on the record. And they're like, we're going to put like our full weight behind the song because we love it so much. And hindsight, I'm so glad that they did because as an artist and a writer, you want to write songs that are relatable. And even though this was very special and intimate between Cecilia and I, it became a very, very special song for a lot of other people. So actually, I'm glad that it, uh, it came to be. As a guy who did long distance for three and a half years with my now wife, I appreciated it very much, so thank you. Well, my pleasure. I mean, yeah. you're counting down the hours so you can see somebody again. It's not rocket science, right? But uh, you know what? It was just something that I felt in the time, and I'm glad that you well, related to it too. As we go back, let, let's, let's collide our worlds here. We talked Bachelor, Bachelorette. We talked songwriting. You were with Caitlin Bristow with a new song, filming a video a couple of days ago. What's going on there? Well, you know, I've been very, very careful to not talk about new music at all. I just try to be very present with what's been going on with my career currently. But we've made a decision now that this song is almost ready to go. And, of course, with her social media, Jason Tardick, uh, her wonderful boyfriend and my good buddy, um, and my social media, we couldn't hide that we were in the Bahamas <laughs> together. So we made a decision that that was kind of going to be the first time that anybody was going to know about new music. And I'm so excited for the song. I'm even more excited for the video and how this song is going to start, I'll say it in this way, kind of a new era for me in my, in my career, my songwriting and the way that I, uh, you know, I'm gonna move forward in country music. I won't press you too much on it because I know we'll get in trouble if we do that, but I want you to promise me that when it's ready to go, we'll do the Kiss and Country debut on my show. Okay, I would like that very, very much. You're gonna have to uh, fight Chris, Jack, and Matt for it, but I'll tell you what, based on yours and my friendship and connection <laughs> and how, I don't know if you've ever disagreed on anything, yes, let's do that, let's play that song. And um, when we get uh, a pretty good cut of the video, I'll text it to you, and I'd like you to critique it. 
I don't feel comfortable with that. I don't know if I can do it. But I will. I, talking WWF, I've seen three-on-one handicap matches. I can take those fluffs. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> this, and this one, this is, a, it's, it's funny because we're, we're talking behind the scenes, behind the camera, uh, J uh, uh, Jason, Caitlin, and I, and then it's like, oh, yeah, we have to work now. Okay, yeah, that's great. Okay, all right, guys, settle down. Okay, let's get the shot again. So it's pretty funny how I wish there actually was a little bit more behind the scenes. It wouldn't go with the song, but uh, if we were mic'd up the whole time, I think the internet would blow up with some of the, some of the stuff we said. That's kind of like our interviews. Like if there's some behind the scenes stuff, yeah. you know, right? Um, I wanted to talk a little bit about this jacket you're wearing. So 93, the year Big Valley Jamboree started. How cool is that just to be wearing and sent one of those? Oh, I, I'm so thankful that, uh, well, Chris and the team at BVJ sent this because I've been wearing it with pride for the last couple of weeks. Big Valley Jamboree is... Um, is one of the most amazing festivals in the world of any genre. And the reason why I say that is because for something to have lasted as long as it has through the good times and the bad times, we all remember, well, 10 years ago, uh, yesterday, what happened in 2009. Um, you know what, they faced a lot of adversity, but it's become a, a staple in the culture and the fabric of Alberta and of Canadian country music. Anybody who's anybody has played here at Big Valley Jamboree, and as a proud Albertan, I wear this jacket with pride because I love Big Valley. I want you to think about, have you had a chance to sit back as you're walking around the grounds, thinking about the first year you were here, young kid, like, this is incredible, there's Danny Hooper, all these musicians, and now you're opening, basically, for Brooks and Dunn? That's, it's a pinch me moment, this year especially, because, yes, I think you remember, uh, so many people remember uh, me as a little kid, uh, 10 years old, 12 years old, 14, 16, just hanging out at Big Valley. Like, I was kind of like that kid you just can't get rid of because I wanted to meet Ricky Skaggs. I wanted to hang out with Danny Hooper. I wanted to do this, do that, meet these guys. And, and I was so thankful that everybody took me under their wing. So I feel, and I'd like to make sure that everybody here in the organization of Big Valley and everybody in the crowd that's going to see me play right before Brooks and Dunn will feel some sense of ownership and that they're entitled to feel excited because they made me. They all did. You all did. And it's like, I'm very, very grateful for that. And I don't know if there's anybody or, or many others um, in the, uh, who's come up through the ranks of the Big Valley Jamboree to kind of reach this. And the next step is for me to maybe come back and headline um, in a couple of years. Now, you wanted to play a game, and it just so happens, talking Big Valley, I have Big Valley Jamboree this or that ready for you, okay? All right. Can't wait. All right. Whiskey or beer? Whiskey. Stand or sit during a concert? Oh, Stan, if, like, don't sit. Like, go sit at home. But my feet get hot. Yeah, I, I get it, but, and you know what, and, and it's, no, it's, uh, you wear your cowboy boots, you wear your rubber boots, you go barefoot, I don't care, but you stand up and you have a great time. That's what Big Valley's about. Camping in a tent or an RV? Well, I'm a, I'm a glamper. Uh, I am. So it's uh, RV or, or my bus, if you don't mind. Shotgun or beer bong? Uh, both, back to back. I like shotgun and beers better, though. Plaid shirts or tarps off? Uh, uh, I'm not a tarp soft guy because I've got a, 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 a pretty bad dad bod right now, but uh, I don't know. Plaid shirt, tarp soft, I don't care. It's awesome. Daisy Dukes or fancy boots? Uh, both. This is this or that? You, absolutely not. Uh, Daisy Dukes. Uh, not for me, though. I don't like Daisy Dukes. When CeCe wears Daisy Dukes, mm -hmm. Actually, the new trend this year, if you see the dudes, is it's dudes Dukes, and it's not a good look on any dude. It's not, it's, it's not a good look, but you know what? I thought that there's no way fanny packs are going to come back, and then it's like it's 2019. Everybody's got one. So it's like... Brooks are done. Uh, see, I will not... That <laughs> never... Don't, don't do that to me. Opening for Garth or opening for Brooks and Dunn? <laughs> don't do that to me. <laughs> I'm just going to say Brooks because it's... Is it Garth Brooks or is it Brooks and Dunn? I don't know. So he picked Brooks. You heard that. It's like, oh! <laughs> you're, you're incriminating. You could definitely work for The Bachelor because you're just, you're just weaseling in here, these answers. It's the most dramatic interview ever. One more thing. I'm a dad in a month. Give me some advice. Uh, okay. Don't take anybody's advice. And I'll tell you why. Just enjoy the moment. You're, 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 you're going to be a great dad. And what works for me may not work for you. And what worked for your parents in a previous generation is all great, but it may not work for you. What works for that guy is not going to work for you. Do your own thing. Don't take it. anybody's advice. Reusable diapers or not? Uh, you're going to be convinced about <laughs> reusable diapers in the beginning, and then you're going to say, to hell with that. I'm going, 
I'm going uh, honest or rascal and friends or whatever those. Hey, get organic. Like, get good organic. Yeah. There's only like 30 cents more per diaper. And it's rash free and stuff like that. But uh, reusable, you're, you're going to do that for one wash cycle. Then you're going to be like, uh uh. Final one Chris Jack and Matt or Greg Reynolds? Greg Reynolds. 